All stunts are performed by trained professionals on closed road environments. Do not attempt anything that you see in this video ever. Oh, and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? I haven't seen you in ages. That's completely my fault. I'm really sorry. Work and life just gets in the way sometimes and I haven't released a video for a good couple of weeks. Good news though, Auto Shenanigans has now made it to 1,000 subscribers and guys, thank you so much indeed for sticking with us. I really do appreciate it honestly it makes the whole thing feel really worthwhile when you see those sub counts go up and the view counts go up so really I do appreciate it thanks again guys of course we had to celebrate this absolutely monumental milestone so me and the production team have come up with an idea that's sure to amaze and entertain okay I'm sure you've worked everything out from the title of the video but the story goes that we were trying to think of something special to celebrate the 1000 subscriber mark Military flypasts, street parades, circus, fireworks were all some of the great ideas that we're not going to do. Instead, we thought, why not try to drive 1,000 miles from one tank of fuel? And I guess that means it's one mile for every subscriber. So, challenge decided then, but there's a problem. In order to achieve this monumental task, we're definitely going to need to utilise the motorway network. However, it turns out that England isn't really that big. And for example, if you were to drive all the way up the M6, across at the top, and then all the way back down the A1, you'd still fall short of the 1,000 miles by quite some margin. No good then. What we need is some sort of large circular road that will allow us to clock up the miles without having to turn off. The M25 then, perhaps England's most hated motorway. Now, yes, before the internet erupts, I am aware that the M25 is not technically a full circle. You've got that stupid bit of Dartford where the A282 is. However, for what we're doing, it's perfect. Welcome to South Mim Services, conveniently located right on the M25. It's going to serve as our starting point and hopefully we'll make it back here at the end. First things first, we're going to grab a coffee and at the same time I think we'll probably squeeze in whatever little diesel we can. Obviously we did fill up before coming here but I think we're going to need every last litre that we can get, so coffee. <laughs> Full tank, happy days. Ignore the brake light failure warning. Distance to empty, 758. It's not a thousand, is it? Right, it has all officially began, or begun. Right, it has all officially started. We're joining the M25 at Junction 23, as I mentioned, just by South Mim Services. At the section of the M25 between Junction 22 and Junction 23 was the last section to be completed before it opened in 1986. Very interesting. interesting. Very interesting, absolutely. I've got lots of useless M25 trivia lined up. So here it is everybody, the mighty M25, 117 miles of absolute chaos. It was opened by Margaret Thatcher, as I mentioned, in 1986. It's just one shitstorm after another with her, isn't it? Four miles done, 996 to go. Are you feeling confident? Absolutely. No, no. Oh, that was a positive answer, I was expecting something different from you. Well done, well good, good, oh, all right. Sorry, no worries. We, can, we can redo that. No, no, it's absolutely <laughs> fine, we'll go with that. Just going back real quick to the 117 mile length. In order to rack up a thousand miles, that means we're gonna need to do 8.5 full laps of the M25. That's just fucking stupid. And in fact, we don't need to do 8.5, we probably need to do nine laps really, because it would be ideal, don't you think, if we ended where we started. Now, if you're wondering, according to the internet, to do a full lap of the M25 on a good day would take you roughly one hour, 40 minutes. We need to do eight or nine laps, so realistically, I think we're gonna be sat on the M25 for about 14 and a half hours or something. It's fucking retarded, man. So I guess there's not much else for us to do other than sit back, relax, get comfortable. I've got the cruise control on. Seven miles done. It's gonna be a long video. So we've decided to go clockwise around the M25. Certainly to begin with, there's nothing really to say we can't change direction. And in fact, 
the challenge is to do a thousand miles on the M25. So as long as we pretty much stay on it and achieve a thousand miles, it's not really going to matter which way we're going. And hopefully we can avoid traffic by using that technique, but we'll come to that later. Yeah, so shortly after you leave South Mims, you will arrive at Dartford Crossing. The QE2 bridge is a rather wonderful structure that spans the Thames. The bridge opened in 1991. Before that, Two tunnels were used to go underneath the Thames and allow you, obviously, passage, if you will. In the present day, the bridge takes care of the southbound traffic and the two tunnels take care of the northbound, unless there's a closure for whatever reason, and then they can route the traffic in whatever direction they need to via the two tunnels. By crossing the bridge, we arrive in Kent, one of six counties that we'll be driving through today eight times. Oh shit, that's a point as well. Yeah. There's the dart charge to pay when you cross the bridge or use the tunnels. Um, do you know how much it is? Can you look it up? Uh, yeah. One second. Nice one. If you have an account, a car, motorhome or minibus that have nine or less seats is two pounds. Two pounds? Yep. To cross the... Two yep. pounds? That's ridiculous. That's like one litre of fuel. So whilst there's a cost of living crisis going on, we're spending however much crossing a fucking bridge. And whilst we're talking about the costs, should we just have a laugh for a moment at the cost of diesel? Two pounds a litre. Now, this car has a 75 litre tank, so you can do the maths there. I suspect this is probably one of the most expensive and slowest trips that we're ever likely to do. Now that we've hit 1,000 subscribers, the offers for loan cars and demonstrators have gone through the roof. And accordingly, my inbox has been absolutely inundated with emails from PR and marketing companies worldwide offering all manner of exciting things. But I thought, no, why would I want a Lamb Jaguarari when I've got one of these? It's been seen on the channel many times, but this is our 2008 Saab 95 estate, or wagon if you prefer. When new, it's 1.9 litre diesel engine tracked out 148 brake horsepower and 320 newton metres of torque. When new. Nearly 15 years and 170,000 miles later, I can't imagine it getting anywhere close to that. Oh, and did I mention, with us fat cunts in it, it weighs over 1,700 kilograms. Sports coupe, this is not. I'll probably bleep out the C word. Yeah, 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 yeah. What it is, however, is a sofa on wheels. For long distance cruising and filming all over the country as we do, these chunky IKEA leather seats are absolutely fantastic. With the rear seats down, it has a class leading 1,500 litre load capacity in the back, so we can get all of the gear in and everything else. Too fat for this. We prefer the term rotund. I'm in the boat. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> Quick mileage update, 51. One thing that does concern me slightly, upon reading up the specifications for the Saab, it's quoted as doing an average 43 miles per gallon, which is pretty crap really for a diesel, but I imagine it's the excess weight that's letting us down. Can you work out, because this, this might not work, can you work out how or what MPG we need to do to actually do a thousand miles? Because having not actually looked into it, and the official quote being 43 miles per gallon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, hold on one second. Calculator. This is the Coron to Rate of Exchange. It is, <laughs> it is 61 miles per gallon is what we need to do, sir, I think. Using my rudimentary man maths. 
Right. So 61 miles per gallon. 61 miles per gallon. But the official quoted figure from Saab is 43. There's a bit of a difference there, isn't there? I'm no maths expert, but yes, I can even detect that there is a bit of a difference there. I think there. it's less. So it seems this might be a bigger waste of time than we first thought. And money. And money. So we've just clocked up to 100 miles and the fuel tank is showing as completely full, which is rather interesting. I guess that means it's broken. Uh, we're approaching the Rickmansworth Junction on the M25, Junction 17, and our timekeeper will update us with the minutes. How long have we been going now? One hour and 58 minutes, sir. So one hour, 58 minutes to do 100 miles. It's not even one lap, is it? And we've still not completed one lap, no. We're still, uh, let's see now, 14 miles away from completing the first lap. We are just coming up on Junction 23, which means we're about to complete our first full lap of the M25. How do you feel? Bored now, can we go home? Fair enough. Only eight more to go. What's the time saying? How long has it taken for us to get all the way around for the first time? Two hours and 15 minutes. Two hours, 15. And the internet said the best you're going to do is one hour 40, so we're a little bit behind on that. But to be fair, we haven't actually got stuck in too much traffic, just, you know, usual M25, if you will. Um, but we have been sat at 50 miles an hour to ensure we get the maximum MPG we can from the car. So it is quite slow and tedious, but only eight more laps to go. Not long after you leave South Mim Services, you'll come up to the Dartford Crossing. We addressed that earlier. We're now coming up to the Dartford Bridge for crossing number two. Okay, at 171 miles in, we've decided we're going to make our first stop at Clackett Lane Services. So we're going to grab a coffee and something to eat, I imagine. Um, I'll give you the stats. So yes, I say 171 miles in. We are averaging probably enough miles per gallon at the moment, so that's good. And the fuel tank is showing slightly less than full surprisingly and timekeeper where are we up to so far how long have we been doing this stupid idea for three hours and 19 minutes I don't know where I'm going that sorry way. I got that lost way. in the service station everybody uh, right three hours 19 minutes Correct. brilliant With a speedy pit stop consisting of overpriced sandwiches and lukewarm coffee, we hastily got back on the road and quickly noticed that the M25 was up to its usual tricks. Have a look at this traffic jam. Uh, the reason I'm bringing it up is because the first time we went round this section, this traffic jam was here. This is the second lap now and it's still here. You can see why the M25 gets its reputation as being a complete cut. Well, we've run into a little bit of traffic which is surprising, isn't it, for the M25? Who would have thought? That just never happens. Anyway, to be fair, the motorway, when it was built, was only ever designed to handle 100,000 vehicles. Fast forward to today, and that figure has almost doubled and is around 196,000 vehicles per day at the last count, which I think was actually done some time ago, so it's probably even more now. It is 10 past five, and we started this at something like 11 o'clock, so we've been on the road for a fair few hours already. We've just completed lap number two of the M25 in its entirety. We're just passing South Mim services again. Timekeeper, how many minutes have we been doing this now? Five hours and eight minutes. So it's five hours, eight minutes to do two laps of the M25, which is not very good. We got stuck at uh, Heathrow. There was a lot of traffic around that way, unsurprisingly. <laughs> Yeah, just clocked 250 miles, which for the maths fans out there will know that that is 25% of the journey completed or one quarter of the way through. The traffic's really starting to build up. We are in prime rush hour, half past five sort of area now, so the next shot will probably be us sat in traffic again. Just change lanes there. Sorry, man, tough shit. 
it is 20 to 8 in the evening. We have, as you can see, just done 333.3 miles, which is a third of the way. So we've been on the road most of the day and only managed a third so far. Fuel we've got, funnily enough, we've used about a third of a tank so far. So, I mean, on that basis, we're fine. Did you have a nap? I did. You all right now? Yeah. Great. I shall go, mate. Four. Parking, that's an easy one then, sweet. Like that. My go. Your go, sir. Also four. Are you going to? Oh. Two, three, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, how, much, how, how much do I owe you? That's a good question. Ten grand, please. Huh. That's the bank, sir. You'll need to be giving me your money. Yeah, yeah, there's a problem with that. Uh, looks like I'm out of money. 10 grand, please. <laughs> there are mortgage Miami. What can I get from Miami? Mortgage. 50 bucks. So you've lost, basically. Yeah, it looks like. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. With the power of clever editing, that is how you finish a game of Monopoly. Yes. You're welcome. Are you done with this? I'm done with this, I lost. Yes, here, let me help you. <laughs> <laughs> Off. We were having so much fun with the Monopoly, we sort of went straight past South Mims. So we are actually on lap number four now, which uh, means we're getting tantalizingly close to the halfway mark at least. Where are we now? Ten past eight. Traffic is pretty light, so hopefully it'll be plain sailing from here. We've just made a quick stop again at Clackett Services because I need a toilet break. We are over 400 miles into the journey now, so we're not even halfway yet. It's just gone nine o'clock in the evening, so we've got a fair while to go yet. Evidently, with boredom well and truly setting in, we trundled along and watched the miles slowly tick by and before we knew it, night was upon us and we ran into a rather unexpected problem. The M25 is closed. Shit, they've closed it pretty much at South Mim Services and around there. The challenge we've got is they've also closed the M25 elsewhere on the anti-clockwise side, so it's not like we can just turn around and do a full loop in the opposite direction. We've got very little choice but to come off in a junction or two, turn around, we'll rejoin the M25 straight away, and then we're gonna just travel back as far as we can. And I guess we'll just keep going back and forth and see what happens. It's the only way we're gonna be able to stay on the M25. We're currently at 463 miles done, so we're not even halfway. And it's 20 past 10. This is a fucking stupid idea. It's quarter to 11, in fact, nearly 10 to 11. We're sat in a lay-by at the moment, having a look at Google Maps. I mentioned earlier the M25 was closed. So we came off and planned to come back the other way. But they've also closed the motorway in the opposite direction. They've also closed the joining junction. So basically it's completely impossible for us from here to really make any progress on the M25. So we have no choice but to divert around some back roads and then we're gonna pick up the M25 again, somewhere around North Watford, I think, and we'll then run in an anti-clockwise direction from there. And the plan is, is to do a thousand miles on the M25. So now this means we've probably really got to be doing a thousand and fifty miles in total to account for all of this bullshittery. But um, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm not sure we're gonna do it now, to be honest with you, because I think this fucking around is, uh, it's going to cost us big time, but uh, no worries, bye. Stalled. 
wrong gear. Uh, fuel gauge has gone up. Right, sorry. Um, we have managed to rejoin the M25, uh, as I'm sure you've seen, following all of our stupid diversions and stuff like that. We've probably added 15, 20 miles to uh, to what we need to cover, which is a little bit annoying, but we are where we are. There's some stupid roadworks on the M25. So we're kind of crawling through there now. It's all gone to shit, really, but um, yeah, well, I guess, I guess it might work out still. We still haven't got to the halfway mark, so 10 past 11 now. We continued to sit on the motorway with nothing but a few other travellers to keep us company. Not a lot happened at this point really, just sitting and reflecting on our life choices. Soon the night became the next morning and the scale of this task was really beginning to reveal itself. Good morning, it is 20 past one. Oh dear, we've done 600 miles, also oh dear. But we're still going, we've still got a third of, uh, third of a tank left, so some range. We're not able to do complete laps of the M25, there have been too many closures. But we're still on the M25, we're just going back and forth on the same section. Yeah, we're not out of the game yet, we've still got plenty of, uh, plenty of fuel. It's just getting on a bit. We figured we'd be done by five this evening. Oh, we're just coming up to the Dartford Crossing, which if you leave South Mims a short while after, you'll <laughs> arrive there. That's too bright. Oh, there's only brighter options. Yeah, that's true. It's 10 to 4 in the morning. Didn't think we'd be going this long, but we are. Um, we've done 725 miles, and the trip computer, or whatever it is, is suggesting we're probably not going to make our target. But we'll try. The sun's starting to come up now, so I'm sure we'll have a lovely sunset as we cross Dartford again or whatever. Is that right? I'm tired. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have a lovely day. sunrise as we um, as we go across Dartford. It's ten past five in the morning, and yes, very much still on the M25. Looking at what fuel we have left and the distance we've travelled, which so far is 791 miles. Um, yeah, it's not looking like we're going to be able to achieve our target of a thousand miles from one tank. Being honest, I just don't think it's going to happen. It's not going to stretch. So, we'll see what we can get out of it and call it a day. Simples. I'm back in daylight now. We started in daylight, went all through the night. It's now daytime the next day. It's 6 a.m. and officially we're going to have to say we can't do it. Uh, we're not going to stretch to a thousand, uh, a thousand miles on this occasion. Uh, looking at the numbers, we're probably at around 860 miles. Uh, out of one tank, 860, which is okay. Um, I think if we'd sat at 45 the whole way, who knows what would have happened, but that was a tall order in the first instance, so uh, that's why we didn't bother. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I'm just going to pull into a petrol station momentarily so we can stick something in to get us home. Uh, and I shall now hand over to me, John. Thanks, John. Well, that's a bit shit, isn't it? If there was an award for the most anticlimactic ending ever, we'd be winning it. We certainly fell short of our 1,000 mile target and I am genuinely disappointed we put all of that time in and sat on the M25 for so long to not make it to 1,000 miles. We actually fell short by around 130, 140 miles. So it was so close but uh, it wasn't meant to be on this occasion. We actually ended up spending 16 hours, 41 minutes on the M25, which is, I think, longer than anybody would want to spend on the M25. 
So yeah, it's a real shame that we didn't make it, but uh, it is what it is. I'm not going to pretend or make stuff up. We'll present things to you as they happen. I just hope that you enjoyed the film nonetheless, despite we didn't quite make it. If you did, there's a button specifically for that. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, that really does help us out. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John, you've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I shall see you next time for another exciting adventure. Until then, take care. See ya. Thank you.